Number 30, letter A. What frequency is received by a person watching an oncoming ambulance moving at 110 kilometers per hour and emitting a steady 800 hertz sound from its siren? The speed of sound on this day is 345 meters per second. All right, so this is essentially a Doppler effect problem, right? Um, you know, just consider here you are, you're stationary, you got this ambulance, right, producing a certain sound. And as it moves towards you, you know that the pitch sounds kind of high, right? And especially relative to as this ambulance passes passes you, well, hopefully it doesn't hit you as I, you know, hopefully it goes around you. And, um, you know, uh, otherwise you'll be the one in the ambulance. The As the ambulance moves away now, um, what we realize is, right, as we're listening to the sound, it sounds like it's at lower pitch then, right, as it moves away, right? So the ambulance is still emitting the same uh, siren, right, same frequency. It's just that as it's moving, the frequency that's hitting your ear is spaced out more because it's traveling to the right. So essentially what we hear now is we hear a lower frequency than what is normally being produced by the ambulance. And similarly, as the ambulance is moving toward you, we hear a higher frequency than what it's normally um, producing. All right. And that should be, you know, if you think about a common experience you've had, that sounds uh, fairly reasonable. So uh, what we have here is we have now two, uh, we have, so this is a Doppler effect problem. Anytime you're talking about frequency being perceived or received or, you know, you got moving sources, things, stuff, stuff like that, moving people, stationary sources, whatever, you know it's a Doppler effect problem. Now, once you know it's a Doppler effect problem, we have two formulas, right, that deal with Doppler effect, all right? And I got them on the right-hand side. Now, there's an easy way to remember uh, these formulas, okay? Which ones to use where. You might be able to use a cheat sheet also, but I, I still think these little acronyms, I kind of was thinking about it before I did the video here. And I'm like, how can I kind of relate this? So um, I got two little little things, right? We got, we got SMO, S-S-M-O, and SOMS, S-O-M-S. -S. SMO and SOMS. So SMO, S-S-M-O, stands for Stationary Source Moving Observer. Okay, that's an O at the end. And then SOMS, S-O-M-S, stands for Stationary Observer Moving Source. Okay, cool. But now how do we know that SMO goes with this equation with the um, addition and subtraction being on the top? And then SOMS goes with this equation that has the addition and subtraction on the bottom. Well, that's exactly it. Right, as my, I was thinking about it, I'm like, so what can I run with Psalms? How can I do this? And I'm like, Psalms, Psalms, Psalms. Oh, I'm like, oh, wait a minute. Something my three-year-old said comes in handy here. Right, so <laughs> he said to me a few days ago, he's like, he's like, Daddy, or maybe it was a few months ago. I don't know. Every day seems like it's just, uh, not even sure. Day's just flying by. Anyway, so he's, he says, he says, Daddy, does this go on the bum bum? And I'm like, oh my God, just melted, totally melted my heart. And I'm like, I'm like, oh, bottom? Yeah. I'm like, wow, but such a cool way to say it, bum bum. I kind of just want to keep saying that now for when anytime I, anytime I talk about putting something on the bottom or something about the bottom. Now I can actually use that. So think about this. Watch. Psalms on the bomb bombs, right? So if you're dealing with Psalms, stationary observer moving source, the signs go on the bottom. Psalms and the bomb bombs, all right, and then SMO would be the opposite, where the signs on the top. Easy way to easy way to memorize it, okay? If you can write it out, you know you got a cheat sheet. Well, that's great too, but not everyone does, all right, as I did when I took the class. Um, so here we go. So in this particular case, we have to think about well, what's happening, what's moving, what's staying stationary. It says an oncoming oncoming ambulance, and it gives us a velocity. And it says the person is watching the ambulance, so I would assume that they're stationary, right? So we're dealing with stationary observer moving source, psalms, all right? And for psalms, the signs go on the bum bums. So let's write out that formula. So we're going to be using this formula. Frequency that the observer experiences will equal the frequency that the source produces multiplied now by the velocity of the sound, uh, normal sound uh, in, in, in that environment, divided by the uh, velocity of the sound wave plus or minus now the velocity of the source okay and obviously if this is a moving source this velocity down here is v sub s for source and then if you're dealing with smo where the uh, 
where the um, observer is now moving, then the addition and subtraction is the velocity of the observer. You know, so that should be easy to, to remember. Um, now, the only other thing is we got this plus minus, I don't know why I was so off, plus minus there, all right, um, where we have, ooh, 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 one second, I got two S's on the bottom. I keep, I don't know, this, whenever I see VW, I think like velocity of water, so I keep, so V, but it stands for velocity of the sound. Um, and V sub S stands for velocity of the source. So now, um, this plus minus is something we have to deal with. Now remember, we kind of just, I kind of actually illustrated the fact. Let me ask you a question. If you were to take the velocity of the source and add it to the velocity of sound, what would happen to the value inside of the denominator here? Would it go up or down? Meaning, would the value be larger or smaller than simply the, uh, simply either of the two, you know, simply the velocity of the uh, sound. Well, it'd be larger, right? You're taking the velocity of the sound, you're adding then something to it, so therefore this denominator is going up. If the denominator is increasing, what's happening to the overall fraction, mathematically speaking? Well, the fraction's going down, right? And this fraction here is directly proportional to the frequency of the observer. So if the fraction's going down, then the frequency that the observer experiences is also going down. And as we just mentioned, as the object moves away, as the source moves away, right? you're experiencing a lower frequency. Low, high frequency, low. As you can see, I do not sing whatsoever. I just hit things, I play the drums, but that's, <laughs> I hit things, I don't, I don't use my voice. So we can, uh, we can basically now break this up into two, okay? We can have the frequency of the observer would be equal to the frequency of the source multiplied now by the velocity of the sound, I keep wanting to write S, but it's W, <laughs> velocity of the uh, sound plus now the velocity that the source, uh, plus the velocity of the source, okay? This formula is for when the source moves away from the observer, okay? And then the other one is going to be towards, right? So we're going to have the frequency, and you can think about mathematically, when we subtract the two, the denominator value should go down. If the denominator goes down of this overall fraction, the fraction goes up. Frequency of the observer is directly proportional to that fraction, so the frequency should go up. We know a higher frequency correlates with higher sound. Okay. And uh, that's totally enough of that. So frequency of the source now multiplied then by the velocity of the sound divided by the velocity of the sound minus now the velocity of the source. All right, and that's the toward uh, equation. So what are they asking us for now in terms of letter A? They're saying the ambulance is oncoming, meaning the ambulance is moving toward the observer and therefore I'm gonna use this formula to calculate it, right? So now all I have to do is plug in the values, right? So frequency of the observer is gonna be equal to the frequency of the source. They told us that the source is producing 800 hertz, right? And that's frequency hertz per second. Those are the right units, so 800. Multiplied by the velocity of sound, so this is 345, divided by then the 345, uh, minus now the velocity of the source, and what is it? You know, they had to do it to us, right? Couldn't just give it in meters per second. So what do we got to do? You got to make sure you got consistency here. So you have to convert the 110 kilometers per hour into meters per second. So kilometer on the bum bum, meter on the top, 1,000 to 1, kilometers bye-bye. Now we got to get rid of hour, hour on the top, second on the bottom. For every hour, there's 3,600 seconds. So hours go bye-bye. Now you got meters per second, right? So take the 110, multiply it by 1,000, and then divide it by 3,600, and we get about 30.6-ish, right? 30.5 repeating. So let's plug that value in now down here. So this is about 30.6. When I do the actual calculation, I'm going to use the exact value. So let's do it. So we got 345 divided by then 345 minus now that value of about 30 and a half. And then we're going to take that and now multiply it by 800. And we get 878 considering rounding. So this is 878 hertz, right? Hertz. Just like this problem. It hurts. <laughs> so um, that's as good as the jokes are going to get today, ladies and gentlemen. So here we have the uh, frequency of the sound that the observer is experiencing. And as we mentioned, it's higher, meaning it's higher in pitch. And that's what we expected as the object's moving toward. So that takes care of letter A. Letter B, what frequency does she receive after the ambulance has passed? So now that means it's the ambulance is moving away. So we're going to use this formula now. 
So this was letter A. Letter B is going to be literally just as easy. Just plug it all in. So frequency of the observer. We have everything we need is equal to frequency of the source, which was 800, multiplied by the speed of sound, which was 345, divided by then speed of sound, which is 345, plus now the approximate value of 30 and a half. Right? Use the exact value when you calculate. So 345 divided by 345, plus now. Oh, no, oh no. Did I put in the wrong number? I think I did. One second, guys. Sorry. So 345 divided by 345 plus then that exact value. I just got to go back and search. There it is. Okay, of about 30 and a half. Then multiply that by 800. And we got three, uh, 735 when we consider the rounding. So frequency of the observer is equal to 735. So 735 hertz. And there you go. All right, that takes care of that, guys. So thank you so much for tuning in. Appreciate it very much. If you can subscribe, it definitely helps us out tremendously. It's also very motivating. All right, and uh, we look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.